Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with Maria, who has become a social media friend. Is that a right way to describe it? So she's a model and filmmaker, and we met on Instagram, and we got chatting about skin, somewhat naturally enough, and you were having a few issues, so I invited you on today to have a chat. Thank you. You agreed, which yes. is amazing. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I know we've had this conversation, I think, for a while now. And yeah. I think today is the day, hopefully, we can talk about this on camera and see who else can benefit, can benefit from the story. Yeah, yeah exactly. Great. So tell me, tell me the history. Um, I would say it's been about 10 years okay. of these up and downs with my skin um, spots, mainly, nothing else really. And it's just becoming frustrating because I'm 30. I think it was, it was the year I turned 30, I was like, there is no way I'm still battling with spots. And um, because I never really had them as a teenager, it could be, it's like I skipped that era yeah. and, and it just came a bit later. And that's not that uncommon. So adult acne where spots either persist into adulthood, so beyond, you know, the typical teens or it first appears mm -hmm. in your adulthood, we know it causes a lot more angst. And I imagine with what you do, particularly causes angst because if you have a bad skin day I guess that impacts your confidence on the job it does um and and it's so funny because I can do shoots when I'm having great skin and they're like oh Marie you've got amazing skin yeah we're just gonna keep working again. together and I'm like it might not be like this next week <laughs> um so yeah it definitely I think has more of an impact on me because of the work I do I'm constantly on camera and going to events and stuff and I have to wear makeup all the time which also doesn't help because you don't want to be trying to cover things up. You just want to slap it on quickly and go. Um, so it is just, it's a, it's a hindrance more than anything. It's not so much, I'd say, confidence, because everyone that knows me knows when I have a spot, I'll happily wear a plaster on my face. You know, there's, there's hydro <laughs> color, the, yeah, the special color plaster. Yeah, I don't care because yes. I just want it to go. It's more of the fact that this is a nuisance because if I have to go somewhere, I don't have time for a spot to dry up um, in the next two hours, so... Fair enough. Yeah. So prior to having breakout prone skin, did you have kind of a, a sort of a strict skincare routine? Or were you somebody who was quite laid back about skincare? What's been your skincare habits in the past? Um, I'd say I'm quite regimed. I've never gone to sleep with makeup on, ever. Brava. In my life. <laughs> so I, I, I definitely, I think I've stripped back a bit more. Maybe when I was going through problems when they started, I thought, okay, let me add more things to my routine, which didn't help. Right. Uh, and now it's very, very simple. It's face wash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and some t once a week I'll use a scrub and then just a moisturizer. But I'm using your retinoid, which we, I know we're gonna go into later <laughs> <laughs> as well. That's the only addition that I've, I've put into my skincare routine in the last Let's say a couple of years, really. Okay, so kind of quite traditional cleanser and moisturizer and yeah. exfoliant. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And is there anything you think makes your skin worse? Is it something that gets worse before your period, or mm. is it affected by anything else to do with your hormones? You know, do you have any kind of sense of what makes your skin worse? So maybe this will hopefully help people as well watching. I feel like I've explored loads of different possibilities to what's causing my spots. The only thing that is open is hormones, and that's where I'm kind of pinning it on that. Um, diet, I'm on a strict skin diet right now. Uh, so I've cut Let's out. talk about that. Yeah, we can talk about well. that. Yeah, because I'd also like to ask you whether, from your experience, what things really do impact skin that, from what you've seen. So one of them is the, is the diet aspect. I do acupuncture. I did a food allergy test as well. I paid for it just to try out every possibility of being allergic to something, even mildly, if that's triggering. Um, sleep, I try to make, I sleep. You're a good midnight. girl, basically. Yeah, I'm going through everything, <laughs> just so everyone knows. And then of course, the typical skincare routine and, and face massages and all that. And I just, yeah, I can go through this really great phase and then suddenly they come back and I haven't done anything different in that time. Okay. Yeah. So All right. Stress and hormones. Let's yeah. Let's put it in that box. And when you say hormones, is that just the period before your period? Is that when you get worse? No. Or there's no. It's there's whenever no it feels like. And your periods are regular. If you don't yeah. Mind asking. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. And what about your chest and your back? Is it just your face? Just face. Just yeah. your face. And at one point, it was only my cheeks. Never did I get spots in my forehead anywhere else. 
And now it's like they're migrating. They're going, it's like, oh, the cheeks are kind of clearing up and they're just going, oh, okay. which is really interesting because around my temple and forehead area, maybe it's because I've started the skin diet and there's all the toxins are the coming out. This coming in. Okay. Yeah. I guess one other thing I'd like to ask you, just in terms of your makeup habits. So you're currently using Flawless Cleanser, Flawless Moisturizer as well? Yeah. And mm-hmm. your exfoliant is? I use a tea tree exfoliant. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that. Um, and then makeup, <laughs> what is what do you tend to put on your skin? Um, so after I moisturize, I'll use a primer yeah. and um, foundation. Which I don't one? use, I use Estee Lauder. Double work? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh my God. I found out why your temples and your forehead are breaking out, I think. Really? Wow. Okay. I'm going to make some alternative suggestions. I don't think that's a particularly great foundation. Great coverage, yes. Mm. Good for clog prone skin. No. It's on okay. my list. If I um, see someone in the clinic, I get my red pen out and I go through and I tell them which mm. products I think are working for them and which ones I think they might be creating an uphill struggle. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's sounding a bit like. You're yeah. putting in lots of energy, you're trying to be good, as yeah. you said, and cut out things that you think might be causing problems. And sometimes we're just looking in the wrong places for things mm-hmm. that together, with just an innate tendency to break out, might be enough to tip us over the edge. Yep. Great, well, if I could have a little look at your skin, it would be yes. really helpful. Sorry, all right, it's then. like picked up, but. No, mm-hmm. not at all. Okay. And just the other side for me. You hide the kind of breakouts that are best revealed with cross lighting. Do you find that you look fine from here, but you see a little bit of this bumpy texture yeah. on the cheeks? And I can see a, a few little tiny ice pick scars, I think, when you've had some breakouts in the mm. past, probably. Head over the other side again for me. Yeah, and I can see a little bit of pigmentation that's mm-hmm. working underneath your eyes, a lot of double wear. Yep. But the <laughs> inflammatory side of your breakouts aren't too bad at the moment. It really is more this kind of insid- insidious bumpiness, would you say? Yeah, it's like, it's weird because my skin texture is like n- nice. Yes. Thank you know, God. But then there's all these little tiny under the skin, but like, I don't yeah, what are they called? Macro. So, micro comedones where you can't area. see them, comedones, or closed comedones, which is where you, it's not a blackhead, it's a whitehead. Yes. Not to be confused with the red bump with the whitehead on it, which is a pustule. Yeah. And the ones that you are tempted to squeeze, although you shouldn't, of course. Yes. <laughs> um, so, the reality is this can be really stubborn. Um, so I'm not surprised that you found that your skin is volatile up and down. It can be quite frustrating. You think you're making progress and you have a good spell and then all of a sudden it breaks out again. Mm. Each one of those congested pores, and that really is what we're dealing with, little blocked off pores and sebaceous glands in the skin, is like a little time bomb waiting to go off when maybe you have a surge of your kind of you know, your, your female hormones or stress hormones, or mm. I don't know, you've had a late night, you've long haul flight, any of those kind of day to day struggles that can just mean that your skin then goes into breakout mode. So yeah. that little time bomb becomes an inflamed spot that mm. leads to pigmentation, maybe a scar if you're unlucky, and the cycle keeps on going as mm. long as the skin stays congested. Yeah, that's lit. Yeah, that, that's the cycle of it. Yeah, it's like a dormant volcano. Yeah, I think that's exactly how I would describe it too. So lurking little time bombs. So the solutions are, I would say, multifold. Shall we go through them? Okay, yeah. Yeah? So the first thing is to do no harm. Mm -hmm. Now, what that means is skincare and cosmetic practices that aren't going to clog your pores. You're probably experiencing a natural tendency to do that anyway. That's just your own sort of acne drive, if you will. Mm -hmm. But if we use the wrong skincare, and I think in your case, the wrong cosmetics, it can definitely push us over into this continuous vicious spiral. Vicious spiral, vicious cycle, I'm mixing my metaphors. (laughs) Um, Where you cover up Mm -hmm. and you break, because you break out and then you break out because you've covered up. Yeah. So it's natural to rely on long wear cosmetics when you're breakout prone, but they can be counterproductive Mm -hmm. in the long term. So massive kind of product detox, get rid of anything that might be causing trouble. Okay, yeah. And then really the cornerstone of solving this kind of problem is your on-clogging ingredients. Now, number one is always going to be retinoids. My number two is probably azelaic acid. So 
They're kind of the cornerstone of the Dr. Sam system because they closely model how I practice. And those are the two active ingredients that I'm prescribing in the clinic. Mm -hmm. I use the most of by far. Mm -hmm. All right, so we need to activate, yes? Mm -hmm. Activate at night with the retinoid and activate in the day with azelaic acid. So okay. for night time, I'm going to prescribe Nightly Pro. That's our new retinoid with 5% granactive retinoid. Now, what's exciting about this type of retinoid? You've heard of retinoids, yes? Yeah. Retinol, retinaldehyde, and then on prescription, you might have heard of differing or mm -hmm. tretinoin. So these are yeah, kind of, I have, yeah. yeah, the ones that are quite well known. So. Granactive retinoid is great because it's not as irritating as a prescription retinoid, but it has better stability, meaning that this will last in the bottle. So we package it, packaged it with airless packaging, in opaque packaging, so it lasts, so it keeps working whilst you have it on your bathroom shelf. Um, but it's really mm. effective without being too drying. I think people mm. get quite anxious about using retinoids, certainly at the beginning in the early days. Now, things to watch out for when you have comedonal acne is that you can sometimes experience a bit of purging with all retinoids. Now, in a way, those little time bombs of blockages, we have to get them out. Mm. Once they're out with continued use of a retinoid, which helps stop the blockages from forming, mm. you should eventually become clear because the retinoid will regulate that tendency. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a patient and persistent thing. And I think I'm maybe going to arrange to do another follow-up video in a couple of months because three to yeah. six months is kind of the timeline we're talking about being realistic. Okay. Not to be pessimistic, but I want you to have realistic goals yeah. and to be kind to yourself if you do get some ups and downs. The key is to keep going. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. I mean dealing with 10 years so three to six months <laughs> i think that's the right perspective is mm. the realization that we didn't arrive here overnight and therefore yeah. it's probably not fixable overnight but with a plan mm -hmm. staying away from things that will clog you up and using things that will help unclog you mm -hmm. together yeah things will get better so that's the retinoid it's in combination with niacinamide and bakuchiol so it's a really nice trio of ingredients to help unclog pores but again shouldn't dry you out and make the skin go irritable and patchy, which can make it difficult to cover the skin up. Yeah. In the morning to activate, I want you to use neutralizing gel. Now that contains salicylic acid, which is an acid, yeah. beta hydroxy acid, meaning it gets into the oily pore, calms inflammation, helps exfoliate out through the pores to help unblock your skin. Physical exfoliants are anything containing tea tree oil, it can be anti-inflammatory, but it can also be quite irritating. And sometimes mm -hmm. we end up with a situation where we actually end up making the inflammation worse and the pigment worse. So mm -hmm. I would lean more towards chemical exfoliation in your skin. All right? Mm -hmm. Better in your skin tone, certainly. That's also combined with azelaic acid. So you're getting azelaic acid, which is, I think, probably the best acid around when it comes to pigmentation. Mm -hmm. It helps unclog your pores. It helps refine the texture as well, so things should just start to look smoother and skin look better on camera. Great. Okay, a mm -hmm. little bit of bakuchiol in there as well, which is kind of a plant extract. It's a bit like a retinoid. So all in all, lots of powerful ingredients working mm -hmm. together. And I think if we get that plan going morning and night time with your yeah. cleanser, your moisturizer and SPF, very straightforward. Things yeah. will get better. You know, remember I think I talked to you about um, hyphrication. Yes. Because she said the same thing. I had all these closed micro comments so anyways that was the way of zapping out and that for the first time in my life I had a period of three months where I had no spots and I was like this is amazing and then November everything just okay, I don't back. know what happened so hyphrication is where we use electrical current to basically open up those blockages mm. so it sort of releases the the comedones however the problem is if the drive to to recur is still there they just it's, it's a bit like trying extraction mm -hmm. you haven't solved the primary root cause and that's where the right ingredients like retinoids and azelaic acid come in yeah. also it depends you might find out your cosmetics are playing quite a big part in what's triggering yeah. your skin and as i said the more you wear your cosmetics the more you get flare-ups it sometimes it can be amazing the difference from just changing one habit like that. Mm. So I'm going to share a list of brands that I like that are suitable for coverage in, in breakout prone skin with you. Please, yeah. I, that could be the key. It like, could be a big part of it. I could have been exploring everything else. So when were you scouted? What age were you? Uh, 23. Okay. 
And you know, you're bound to start wearing cosmetics more in context of your work. That's yeah. I never used to wear foundation unless it was a special occasion or whatever. But day to day, I didn't wear foundation. And to be honest, I still don't. But I, but because I'm on camera more, it feels like oh, it's almost day to day now. Yeah. I mean, I see this a lot in models and actresses where there are external practices that they have to get on board, but they wouldn't normally embrace themselves. You know, particularly people on stage, you have to wear heavy coverage makeup. Um, yeah. So it's funny how sometimes just those little tweaks can make a big difference. That plus the right skincare mm -hmm. um, and kind of just staying on track with a consistent plan yeah. might just be the difference. It gets you better. I'm going to go home and like quickly like remove this mask of makeup. <laughs> Gorgeous. I think it's just about giving you that freedom to not have to rely on it. Yes. I mean, that's what yeah. we all want is yeah. that we can get out the door in the morning without base on if push comes to shove. Like, yeah. we feel better in our makeup, but it needs to be optional. Yes. Yes, exactly. Any other questions on your mind? Yes. So in your experience, diet and skin, have you seen a really strong connection or is it a urban myth? Look, it's one of the factors and there are many. Your sleep patterns you know, the way you manage stress, it's part of that whole kind of collection of how we look after ourselves, which, you know, you're clearly putting a lot of energy and effort into. The things I think can be associated with breakout prone skin um, that we suspect strongly from, from research. So skinned milk, so dairy, but skinned milk in particular, seems to have a tendency to promote breakouts. That was seen particularly in young men. Mm. Um, Certain vitamins, B6 and B12, can sometimes predispose people to break out through mechanisms we don't fully understand. I think, as a general rule, pro-inflammatory foodstuffs that create spikes in our insulin levels, so rapidly absorbed carbohydrates, foods with a high GI index, might mm -hmm. well play a role as well. So that's something I ask patients to moderate. So. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, I don't tell people to cut dairy out, but, you know, choose your dairy products wisely. Enjoy a good cup of coffee maybe every few days or whatever, but don't guzzle six Starbucks every day. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, by all means, enjoy pasta, but maybe don't eat croissants every single morning. Yeah. Right. Um, plenty of sort of leafy green stuff, colourful vegetables in particular. So mm -hmm. eating the rainbow, I think, is a good general approach. That tends to be the best way to combat inflammation in the body in a very kind of general sense. Get plenty of zinc from your diet, things like nuts, um, shellfish can be good sources, and omega-3s. Those are things I think we should do to help promote good skin. Mm -hmm. If you're on antibiotics, and a probiotic can be a really good thing to take to protect your gut and may have a positive impact on your skin as well. But I don't really recommend any one supplement in particular. I think that yeah. nutrition is best got from food where possible. Yeah. And then just, you know, diet explored with those kind of bits of data in mind. Yeah. Oh, this is an interesting question. Has there ever been any study looking at um, people from different races or mixes and a connection to acne or problematic skin? The thing is, acne is so common. 85% mm. of teenagers get it, um, and it happens across all races. Sometimes the way it manifests can look different in different skin tones. Sometimes you don't see the inflammation so much, but you can see the texture. Mm. And in darker skin tones, there is sometimes an increased tendency to scar with less inflammation. Um, so those kind of things influence the way acne gets expressed in the skin. But I don't think fundamentally there is a huge difference mm -hmm. in frequency. There are areas of the world where we don't see acne at all. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of the name of the islands. There's an island called near Paraguay. I can't remember the specifics of it, mm -hmm. um, where it just doesn't occur. And if you think about it, 85% in, in Western societies, teenagers will yeah. get acne. It's so common as to be normal. So there it's thought that a sort of hunter-gatherer diet might be a big part of why they don't get it. Mm -hmm. But equally, there's probably genetics at play too yeah. so um it's a fascinating disorder super common still in adulthood as many 40 percent of adults will continue to get breakouts into into adulthood so you are very far from alone it doesn't spare anybody i see everyone from actresses <laughs> more models like yourself you know it, it just affects everybody but yeah. with a good plan and kind of care in all these different areas of your life i find ways people get better okay well, <laughs> it's new year <laughs> <laughs> a new retinoid. Yes. There we go. Exactly. A I, new makeup. 
<laughs> yeah, I can't wait to yeah. see you back. Let's plan to see each other again in maybe three months' time. Yeah. That's how I would usually see someone after putting them on a plan and seeing what your progress is. Yes, that makes sense, and that'll be good. All right. Well, listen, guys, I hope you enjoyed hearing a real life experience of acne and breakouts and, you know, just seeing how it affects someone and how we put together a plan for a little bit of optimism. Thank you. Thank you so much Appreciate for joining it. me Thank today. You so Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us, guys. Bye for now.